right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with legendary Hall of Fame announcer, Mean Gene Orkland. Mean Gene, how are you doing here today in Hamilton? Well, I'm doing great, but I'm always doing good, uh, whether it be Toronto, uh, uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, Paducah, Kentucky, I'm always doing great. Now, Gene, did you think that you would be involved in professional wrestling this long? Like, I mean, you have had an astounding career. My mother still doesn't know what I do for a living, and I'm going to keep it under my hat for a very good reason. No, I've, I've had a great career. No regrets. I don't look back. If I do, it's all with uh, fond memories. Now, when you started in the, the AWA, how did you, I'm curious how you actually got involved. Were you already involved in broadcasting and the wrestling came along, or was that your entry? No, it's the same deal that I had with McMahon. He's my brother-in-law. I'd never got the job. I wouldn't have had a snowball's chance in Helena, Montana. But uh, no, I just I, I broke in. I worked at a TV station, so it was a natural transition. The wrestling I picked up as we went along. Were you a fan? I was. I was as a kid. Everybody, every kid had to be a fan. If you were a guy, maybe the gals. But uh, no, I was. I was a big fan and. Probably even a bigger fan today. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Um, now, how did you feel when you got the call from McMahon and this whole idea that he was going to take it national and you know kind of break that unwritten law about you know getting into each other's territories? Did that was that uh, inundating or did it freak you out? Or? Well, it was a little uh, unorthodox at the time, and of course, uh, his uh, father, uh, Vince McMahon Sr., would have been very much against that. Uh, stepping on toes that was sacred ground and uh, uh, not not to be uh, not to be stepped on and all of a sudden this guy not only took the country but he took the world it's a global enterprise today and a huge success now of the of the newer talent the the, ki the kids that we're seeing today uh, who st who stands out for mean Gene Okerlin ooh you know what there's a lot of great talent uh, there's no doubt this Roman Reigns, of course, with his lineage, uh, is going to be a big star. But uh, so many great young guys coming up, pretty tough to pick one out of the bunch. Right, right, right. Now, I think the last time we saw you on TV was for the Ric Flair. Uh, was it the Hogan birthday celebration was the last time that you were on Raw? That that, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So did you guys go out afterwards? Did you whoop it up? We went out before. Oh. Older guys do that. <laughs> no more late nights with Ric Flair? Oh, no, please. Rick, uh, Rick, Rick's got my liver in his uh, uh, safety deposit box. <laughs> Probably good place. place. Good place for it. So how do you feel when the, the, the you're at these conventions and the fans come up? Because I mean, I mean, to some wrestling fans, you are you're you're the guy. Like nobody, they don't know anybody else. Well, of course, you know, being on the ball that long, uh, you can imagine forty some odd years on TV, uh, and even with the periodic appearances today, kind of gratifying though to see people coming in with their kids, and uh, you got two or sometimes three generations that have uh, had a chance to see you through the years. Yeah, no, absolutely. Is there ever a time when Mean Gene Oakland will retire, or is that a bad word? Re not a four-letter word. Yeah, retire to what? <laughs> no, I'm not going to retire. As long as they can prop me up, I'll be there. All right, well, thanks so much for talking to us, Gene. I really appreciate it. Dan, a pleasure was mine. All right. You got the money? Yeah. <laughs> what the there hell's the deal here? <laughs> Scratch at <laughs>